welcome back to my channel. Sorry for going a bit MIA for a little bit there. As I explained in previous videos, I was going on my honeymoon in America and it was a really fun time. I had a mostly enjoyable time. Now originally, <laughs> The plan was I was going to film the entire trip and share it with you guys when I got back home. But unfortunately, I had a little mishap, if you will, in Atlanta and my phone ended up getting stolen. So I had no way of filming the rest of the trip. <laughs> so there's no videos. Sorry about that. It is what it is. <laughs> Maybe I'll go on a trip again another time and I'll be able to share that one with you. Anyway, here's a tiny bit of footage from Dragon Con. And that's because I'm at a little convention called Dragon Con. This was all I managed to get before my phone decided to go bye bye. <laughs> Now that I'm home, I spent this weekend at Sandbox Convention. It was really cool. It was like the first pop culture convention being held here in my hometown of Whangarei, so that was kind of a big deal. I was invited to judge the cosplay competition there, and it was really cool just fostering a whole bunch of amazing young talent here in Whangarei, so that was awesome. Had a really good time and can't wait for the next one. Enough about my life and what I've been up to. Let's uh, get down to what you guys are really here for. Padme! <laughs> so I'm jumping right back into my Padme series, mostly because the entire costume is due to be finished in a week, and this is currently the state of her. So yes, I have a week to get this whole thing finished. I'm not panicking. It's doable. Right. <laughs> so as you can see, I have the dress with the robe part to make and the sleeves and the egg. I do think I'm able to do it. It's going to be a hell of a week for me. The part I'm most concerned about doing is just making all the piping that goes in between all of the million seams on this. So that's what I'm going to be starting with today. I did it to myself. I chose to take a month off to go overseas and yeah, I've only got myself to blame for this. Let's jump right on into it. So I will be starting with the piping first and I'm using the same satin that I use for the tabards. This is the cording I'm using. Here are some tools that I'm going to be using as well. Let's get into it. So the first thing I'm doing is laying the fabric flat and drawing straight lines on the diagonal of the fabric. This is called the bias. I then repeated the step at least a million times until I had what would essentially make 100 meters of bias tape. Three hours later. After getting about halfway through cutting out all the bias noodles, I got sick of it and decided I'd rather start sewing them together. So that's what we're doing here. After all the pieces were sewn together, I then trimmed away the excess fabric and then ironed those pieces flat. And this makes it so much easier later on when you put the actual piping cord in it. All right, so that big old pile of bias noodles that you just saw. <laughs> It's only 42 and a half meters. And I wasn't kidding when I, I showed you the thing that said it took three hours to make. I still have 57.5 meters of bias to make. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Next step, I'm going to show you how to turn it into piping. So first thing I've got to do is change the foot on this old machine here to a zipper foot. Let's go. Basically, to turn the bias tape into piping, you just get a length of cord and run it down the center, fold it in half, and then using your zipper foot, sew as close to that cord edge as possible, and voila, you've got piping. Now repeat this for eternity until you have a hundred meters of piping. And I'm calling it for day one of making the rest of Padme in a week. I just ran out of bobbin on my machine here while sewing the piping. I didn't even get halfway through it. Here's the rest of the noodles. I'm over it. I think tomorrow before I start, I'll load up several bobbins so that I don't have the issue of re-threading it 
and I can just go, go, go. So, yeah. I also need more red thread. <laughs> I didn't know. I know I had this problem when I first started making Padme 2 and for whatever reason I just brought one spool and I'm almost out of that now so I'm probably gonna have to go pick some more of that up tomorrow too. Uh, it's still doable. Half. <laughs> Half the piping. I still have this much to go. But because I'm absolutely sick of making it, because this has been one and a half days worth of work, what I'm going to do now instead is make a sleeve just to break it up because I'm sick of piping. <laughs> it's so boring. So let's jump into a sleeve. Now for the sleeve fabric and the fabric for the rest of the dress, I'm using this red finger line that is the same shade of red as the satin we've been using. Using my self-drafted pattern, I then proceed to cut out all 16, yes you heard that right, 16 panels for one of the sleeves. I then pin a bunch of piping in between each of the seams in the sleeve and then I get to sew that together using the zipper foot. Good morning, welcome to day three of making Padme. Yesterday I got the outer part of one of the sleeves, one of the sets of sleeves completely finished. I'll show you that now. I decided to do this bit first because out of all the bits on the dress, it is the most difficult part to have done because it had a lot of curves and just odd shapes in it, whereas the robe itself is just straight lines, so that should be pretty straightforward. Anyway, doing that, I noticed she has not one, not two, but three sets of sleeves, so six sleeves total. She's got two arms, but six sleeves, so this morning I'm going to be making the other two sleeves that she wears underneath the big giant one that I made yesterday. So I've already done the mock-ups for them. Uh, the inner red sleeve needs to be taken in quite a lot. And I'm actually not sure how I'm going to make that one just yet because it's skin tight, as you can see in the photo here and the fabric I have doesn't exactly have a stretch in it so I'd want that to be stretchy so I could still move my arms so I'm really not sure how I'm going to tackle that particular sleeve um, obviously I'll update you when I get to that as for now I just need to line the big sleeve with fur make the inside fur sleeve and then we'll get round to that stretchy one and yeah figure out that when we get there to make the lining of the sleeve, I first need to unpick the mock-up. So I think what I'm going to do for the lining of the sleeve is actually cut the sleeve in half along this notched area here because you only see this much of the fur. And so I'll cut this bit out of fur and then this bit here out of the red lining so that way I'm not being completely wasteful with the really, really expensive fur that I'm using to line this with. So that's the next step. This is the fur fabric that I chose to use, and as you can see, it's absolutely beautiful, but it was wildly expensive, but we're not going to talk about that. Anyway, laying out my pattern piece, I then trace it out, and then using an X-Acto knife, I'm going to cut out the shape, and this really just eliminates cutting through the fur and having fur flying all around your craft room. It's really a good tip. Then I cut out the top half of the sleeve using this lining fabric that was the same shade of red as the satin and the bengal line that we've already used in the costume. Next I attach the fur along the bottom edge of the lining fabric. I then folded the sleeve in half and sewed along the inside edge and then voila! We have all one sleeve made. Next I pinned the lining and the actual sleeve right sides together and sewed them together and then turned them right way out. And look at that, we have a sleeve! 
The two main big sleeves are now done, so I'm going to work on the smaller first sleeve now. And I'm going to steal what I did for the lining of the big sleeves and make the smaller sleeves that way. So the bottom half of it will be the fur that you see, and then the rest of it will just be made out of lining fabric. And once again, that's to save on weight and to make it less warm because I don't want to overheat and die in this. Yeah. All right, let's make another sleeve. Next one. Okay, two out of the three sleeves are now done. I am going to attempt to do sleeve number three now, the very inner one. <sighs> so I wasn't able to find any sort of stretch fabric in town that matched the red fabrics I already have and I didn't want to mess around with dyeing. So I'm going to try and make this third sleeve out of the satin that I have. We all know how to make a sleeve at this point, right? Like, you cut it out, you fold it in half, you sew along the inside seam and hope for the best. Cool? Well, we should do after having made six of them. Sleeves are done. So I've got one, two, three. Three sets of sleeves. Happy with them. They sit just where I want. Don't know if you can see the full sleevage. They'll um, sit a lot better once they're actually sewn into the dress and then you can see the right amount of each sleeve. It's just, you know, for this I had to pin them to my shirt and they're very heavy so they're wanting to, you know, go down. Yeah, sleeves. So here is the mock-up on the dress form. As you can see, I have altered one side of it, which is this side here. So this part here is going to be hidden by the tabard, so I'm not going to cut these ones all the way up. This will just make it easier for me in the long run. And same in the back here. So cut it down like that and that'll be hidden. It means I don't have to do so much piping through the rest of it and get to save a little bit of fabric on the top there. So that side's what it originally looked like with the full length panels and that is it cut to, well, the length it's gonna be. And here's me demonstrating that exact same thing again, but this time I'm wearing it. How neat. In a similar fashion to how I made the sleeves, I am now cutting out all 24 panels of the dress. And using the satin fabric, I cut out the top pieces that go in the front and the back. Alrighty, here is everything all cut out and I have them sitting in piles according to which number paddle they are. It is time to finally start sewing this thing together. And once again, just like the sleeves, I am putting piping in between each of the seams of the dress while making sure not to lose my place and forget which number panel I'm sewing to which. All right, first two panels are sewn together. Look at that nice piping. I'm not going to bore you with the rest of the 22 panels that need to be added to this. So next time you see this, it'll all be sewn together. Cool, let's do it. One eternity later. And she is done. So that is all of the panels sewn together now. And the next step is to overlock all these seams on the inside just to tidy them up and stop them from fraying. And then I'm going to add the insert piece in the front and the back. Ta-da! All of the edges are now overlocked, looking pretty, no more fraying. So now I'm going to put the front and back inserts in the top and then we can look at start adding a fur trim or something. Who knows at this point? 
Hey, as you can see, the dress portion of the overrobe thing, whatever it's called, is done. Yay! <laughs> so, you'd probably think that the next part would be either attaching the sleeves or the fur trim along the hem. But, both of those things would add just a little bit too much weight for me and it'd make what I'm actually going to do next a little bit more difficult. So, what I am going to do next is egg in the bottom. So this here is my prototype egg. It is the correct size of what I'm going to be using when I make the final eggs for it, but this one's just a bit lumpy and I really didn't like the paint that I used on it, so we're gonna change those up. But you'll see that in the next part when I actually do make the eggs. So what I'm going to do is mark out where these go along the bottom edge of the dress. I'm going to cut them, not the eggs, and then I'm going to cut out that area so that these can just stick straight in, nice and snug. Got it? Cool. Let's go. After cutting the holes out, I then overlocked the edges and then made some notches in them. This is so that I could fold these edges back to the wrong side of the fabric and using an invisible hem tape, I could then iron them in place so that it would give me a nice smooth finish on the right side of the fabric. So obviously it's not sitting in there properly just yet, but... All of the holes are now cut out along the bottom and I just have that one sitting there so you can kind of get an idea of what it's going to look like. But yeah, pretty happy with it overall. Now it is time to add the fur trim along the bottom edge so I just cut out some 10 inch wide strips of the fabric and then sewed it along the bottom edge of the dress. That's it really, quite simple. Here it is on the dress. Now unfortunately with the fur I didn't actually have enough to cut it as a curved shape like I wanted to so I did have to cut it as a flat rectangle and that means it's not really the shape I wanted but when you hook it over the hoop skirt like this it kind of fakes the shape I wanted so I'm going to leave it like that because I can't afford to buy enough of this fabric to cut it curved. I think it looks fine. After two hours of solid hand stitching, I finally have the fur trim completely attached along the bottom edge. Super happy with that. Now all I have to do is attach the sleeves on either side and add the zipper to the back. So with all that being done, this will be finished. So next time you see it, I will be wearing it. I did it. It's wearable. I... It's really heavy and it's an absolute chore to put on by yourself. As you can see, I, I don't have the zipper done up in the back because I, I, I can't reach it. <laughs> Maybe? Yeah, not quite. So I need help with that, but yeah, she's on, she's warm. I don't have my shoes on that I'm wearing with it, so I'll probably be a little bit higher at the moment I'm dragging on the ground. Cool. All I have left to do now is the eggs in the bottom to fill in the holes. But look at it! I did it! <laughs> Yay! Hello! So today I am finally going to be tackling the eggs that sit along the bottom edge of the skirt. Now ideally I would have loved to have vacuum formed these or brought those clear easter egg moulds that seem to be readily available everywhere in America but I couldn't for the life of me find anywhere that sold them big enough in New Zealand. So I have resorted to using clear warbler and sculpting the egg shape out of clay and I'm hoping I can just you know 
heat form it to the clay mold that I've made. So let's give that a go. What I've got here is I have drawn out a template of the size of the egg that I need. I have some air dry clay. So fingers crossed this works. In theory, I think it should, but I guess we're going to find out. And done. So here it is. As you can see, it's a very odd egg shape, just what I wanted. So now I'm just going to let it dry for 24, 48 hours, which is what it says. Once that's done, heat form the warbler over it, and yeah, we will just pray this works, because if it doesn't, I have no idea what else I'm going to do. I start this off by cutting out an approximate piece of warbler to cover the egg, and then using a heat gun, I tried my best to form it to the clay mould that I had made. And here they all are, form moulded and ready for the next step, which is painting. I used satin acrylic paint for the fiery part of the egg and a brown matte paint for the ladybug bit. What do you call I don't know what these are. Someone tell me down below. But yeah, just painted them. So it is now time to paint the clear part of the egg. Now originally, I wanted to do this with a transparent glass paint so that it would remain transparent. However, this is the result of the glass paint that I brought and as you can see, it is just, it is awful. Like you can barely see any of the color and it just, it looks nasty. So this is it done with some satin acrylic paint, just painted on the inside. Unfortunately, you do lose all the transparency of the clear warbler, but that's just one of those things. It's going to have to be good enough for now. I've run out of time to source anything else. And like I said, I will most definitely be replacing these in the future when I can find a better way of doing them. They're done. They're not great. They're the best I can do given what I had available to me. As you can see, it's a little bit lumpy, but it is what it is. I tried my best. It'll do for this weekend, but in future, I think I'm gonna get somebody to make these for me in America or something. Someone that has access to better tools than I do because it's okay. I will not condone a course of action that will lead us to war. And there you have it. That is how I made my Padme Amidala throne room costume. Now to say I am proud of how this turned out would be an absolute understatement. This has been my dream costume since I was a child and to finally have it and be able to wear it, it just feels so surreal. So yeah, super duper stoked with this costume. The only thing I would do differently on it if I was to do it again, which I'm not going to, would be to do the eggs differently. That's why I made them removable because I am going to commission somebody else to make them for me because I absolutely hate the ones I made myself. So if you know anybody out there who makes the eggs, please let me know in the comment section down below so I can get this costume perfected. Now, as you may have known, I was actually building this costume as part of the Armageddon Expo All-Stars competition being held in October this year. It was last weekend and uh, yeah, I, I got it done in time. I walked across the stage, did my little bit and I didn't win. 
and that is okay because the person who did win, Alex, with her Aloy costume, it was incredible. You couldn't fault a single part of this costume. It was just like it was ready to walk out on the screen. And I knew going into it that my eggs were pretty puckaroo, they were pretty bad. And so all kudos to Alex and her amazing Aloy. Honestly, kudos to all the competitors. Everybody just brought their absolute A game to this contest and it was such a privilege to be able to be a part of it. Anyway, I am back from vacation now. I am back from cramming to get things done for Benina and Armageddon. So back to usual content for me. Before I go though, if you like this video, please make sure to hit the like button down below. Maybe even subscribe if you feel that way inclined. I usually put out new videos every weekend or so. They're usually crafting, sewing, or fun related. And now that I'm back, I will be seeing you guys next week. See you then. Bye bye. Good morning. Welcome to day three of making Padme. Oh. <coughs> Mm, nice. Now give us your best Roomba impression impersonation. Maybe even Socrates.